plenty of questions still surrounding the tornadoes in Oklahoma. And Scott, we want to bring you into this conversation tonight and talk a little bit about the warning systems that were in place. And the fact of the matter is, is that I just keep going back to that school and why weren't those kids underground? So uh, can you help us out? Yeah, you know, the National Weather Service, actually the Storm Prediction Center, which issues all of the watches. That's okay early in the day. We take a look at the entire weather picture. We say, okay, where is the areas of concern? Where are the areas of concern? And that is located in Norman, Oklahoma, eight miles south of the tornado path. It's in Tornado Alley. That's where most of the research is done in that location. And this is why, right here, because this is what it more looked like uh, during uh, the afternoon, of course, when the storm passed on through. So a tornado watch was issued at 1.10 in the afternoon. Uh, they issued the watch, said it was going to happen starting now all the way until 10 o'clock at night. So this was well in advance of the storm. And when you have a watch issued, it's okay. Be on the lookout for tornadoes. And I read the archived report and it said one or two large tornadoes are a good possibility with this. Uh, talking about damaging winds of 70 miles per hour, large hail. Uh, it was a very high probability event that a large tornado would form. And again, only 1% or less of all tornadoes or EF4s or EF5s. Look at the path in this picture right here. These homes completely wiped out, yet these homes here virtually untouched just outside of the path here. When a tornado is coming, it's wobbling. It's very difficult to say, okay, well, I'll just get out of the way of this of the storm system here. But Roland mentioned something earlier. If you see a, the tornado off in the distance and it's coming towards you, what should you do? You're, you're in your car, you're not near your home. It would be if you're in your car and you're far enough away, you drive a 90 degree in other words, straight to the north or straight to the south here in this particular picture with the tornado going in this direction because it could wobble here. The path of the 99 tornado, look at it right here, came in and curved like this and then it went back up to the north here. This is the path of the tornado uh, yesterday. Unfortunately, this region right in here getting hit with the two storm systems. This is Briarwood Elementary just off the center of the path. The Plaza Towers Elementary School was right in the middle here. The warning then comes out from the local weather office and that warning came out 16 minutes before before the tornado formed. Now, the, st the storm is now rotating. The radar indicates a tornado could form with all the latest technology we have. They issued the warning. The sirens go off. 151 sirens and a new uh, uh, safety net that was set up in this entire region. All those sirens going off near the schools, warning 16 minutes in advance. And if you're in the place you're supposed to be, 16 minutes is a lot of time. And real quickly, okay. Scott, why weren't they underground, the school or? About one out of every 10 people have a shelter. That's about it. And the reason for it, it's a clay soil. It's not that it's too hard, but when you dig in it, it's dry and hard. Then it grabs moisture and it expands and contracts. It's an engineering nightmare. Mm. They can barely build homes in that region. So they have to set it up a certain way and put steel reinforced girders in there. And it's a difficult process that a lot of people more and more continue to do this though. Well, and the other good thing about all this is that it happened during daylight hours. Nighttime, maybe it, a completely different story. It's a lot worse story. during nighttime. You just can't see worse. it coming. Good explanation. Right. Thank you, Scott. Thanks, Scott. All right.